Avid has brought out three new subscription offerings for Pro Tools, Pro Tools Artist, Pro Tools Studio, and Pro Tools Flex. In this video, we're gonna talk about what these offerings are, what they include, and at the end of the video, I'm gonna talk about whether I think it's still worth using Pro Tools as a door. So a few days ago, I got this email from Avid. Uh, we're excited to announce we've updated and enhanced the Pro Tools product line for three new offerings, Pro Tools Artist, for music creators just starting out, Pro Tools Studio for serious music creators and producers and Pro Tools Flex for audio post and high-end music facilities. So I can't say I wasn't expecting an email like this at some point. Um, Avid have been increasingly moving towards the subscription model. They obviously don't want to be selling the perpetual um, licenses anymore, even though they are really expensive. Um, they want people on that subscription model. So let's take a look at the three new subscription offerings and find out what's included in them. So when you click through to the website, uh, you can see more details about the three offerings. So first you've got Pro Tools Artist, um, which is a brand new offering. Um, it seems like it's sort of in between the old Pro Tools first, which they discontinued a few months ago in functionality and the full version of Pro Tools. Um, $100 a year or $10 a month if we scroll down and look at the features. You can have up to 32 audio tracks and 32 instrument tracks, 100 plus plugins included. So, um, and what have we got? There's no uh, surround sound as, as with Pro Tools standard, it didn't have surround sound. Um, yeah, so there's more to it than Pro Tools first, which is the free version that they discontinued a few months ago, coincidentally, uh, weeks after I posted a, um, a Pro Tools first uh, tutorial series. Um, I can see why they've removed Pro Tools first now because they were planning on, on on these three offerings. So it's got more than what Pro Tools first had. It's it's almost as, as feature packed as, as Pro Tools standard. Um, there are some limitations though. And it's not a huge expense, $100 a year. I mean, I'd consider paying that more on more on whether I think they're worth it later on. But um, when you get to Pro Tools Studio, that's when things start getting pricey. Now, they've upgraded me to Pro Tools Studio for free, thankfully, because I had a perpetual license for Pro Tools Standard. So if you're already on Pro Tools Standard and you've got your license, um, it's like current and, and you've got the, the update plan, um, then you'll be upgraded to it for free on a perpetual license. So you won't have to pay to pay the, this subscription. If I do want to upgrade in the future, um, then I, I, to keep these features, I would have to obviously pay $40 a month or 300 a year, which to me is really expensive. Um, for, a, for a small artist or a small studio, a home studio, that is a lot of money a month to use a DAW. Um, there are some feature upgrades. This one is more like uh, in between the old Pro Tools Standard and Pro Tools Ultimate. So you've got the surround sound mixing, which used to only be in Pro Tools Ultimate. You've got some advanced automation features um, and up to, uh, with, it's doubled the, the, the maximum tracks you can have as well. Um, so for me, like I can't really complain. I've been upgraded to this for free, but when in, in a few years, when the time comes, if I do want to upgrade, that is a big expense for me. And then you've got Pro Tools Flex, which is basically the replacement to Pro Tools Ultimate, which is $1,000 a year and $100 a month. Um, that's more for like professional uh, post-production post studios. So what does this mean? And is it still worth using Pro Tools with this new uh, pricing structure and new subscription offerings? For me, if if I if in the future have to upgrade to Pro Tools Studio um, on the monthly subscription, because I'm presuming by the time, uh, like in a few years' time, they won't offer the perpetual licenses at all. You can still find licenses knocking around, like you can get get it for six hundred pounds, and then you don't have to up um, you don't have to pay anything else, but you only get updates for a year. So, uh, but I I reckon that they'll stop selling these, and you'll have to be on the subscription. Now, for people that don't want to pay a monthly subscription, obviously, this isn't the right DAW for you. If you, if you just want to pay 
um, pay for your software and then it's your software and that's that, like I do, to be honest. Um, you might want to start having a look for another DAW if you don't already use one. Like Reaper is $60 or something. You, you can get pre-sona Studio One 5 for un, under £300. Um, and if you think about it, if you're, having, if you're using Pro Tools Studio, that's $300 a year. That's almost the same price for one year of Pro Tools Studio um, as it is for a, a lifetime license on Studio One 5. So really, like financially it, it's not it's not great um and i know avid will argue yeah but if if you were upgrading to every single new edition then it would work out cheaper because you get the um you get constant updates but i had pro tools 10 f for like five years after pro tools 11 had come out you don't need to upgrade um unless you really need a certain feature but for most users um you don't need to, to have the latest and greatest version constantly, so it is a big expense if you're not if you just want the software. And if you're good at what you do, then getting a great mix of recording isn't about having the latest version of a piece of software. Now I do appreciate they've made the cheaper version a bit more robust. Um, for me, I think the 32 audio tracks and instrument tracks most of the time would be fine being limited to that and they allow you to use third-party plugins, whereas Pro Tools first only allowed you to use uh, plugins that were on the marketplace. Um, so I think for, for most, most um, artists and editors, Pro Tools artist will probably be fine. And, and even if you, on a few sessions, even if um, you reach these limits, there are ways around it. You can bounce down a few tracks into a stem once they're mixed and, and keep yourself below those track limits. Now I'm firmly within the Pro Tools eco ecosystem. I've been using it for years. It would take me a while to get as fast with another DAW as it would for Pro Tools. So I wouldn't stop using Pro Tools lightly, that's for sure. Um, if I did have to upgrade in the future, like they stopped supporting a certain operating system or something, I would probably consider going down to the Pro Tools artist version because I, I think um, for a, a small business, $10 a month is affordable. If, for example, there were less features on the Pro Tools Artist or, or there was something that I found out that was missing that I needed, I, I don't think I would consider going to Pro Tools Studio for, for $300 a year when I can get a copy of Studio One 5 or Cubase or something for, yeah, as I said, the same price as a, a single year of Pro Tools. I just don't think it's worth it. I'd probably just take the time to learn a new DAW because it's not like Pro Tools has something incredible that the other DAWs don't have. It's just whatever you're used to and whatever you enjoy using. Um, and then Flex, well, if you were already a subscriber to Pro Tools Ultimate, then presumably the, uh, the cost won't be as much of an issue to you anyway. So outside of the Pro Tools discussion, I think one other thing um, that's worth thinking about though is that if Avid get away with this so to speak if they're able to sell these subscriptions to people um, and it becomes a new status quo I imagine a few of the other door manufacturers like Presona, Steinberg um, they'd, they'd start they'd start their ears would start pricking up and thinking hmm maybe we can get away with charging $40 a month for our DAW so I would expect more and more of this in the future but I reckon there will always be software around that you can just buy a perpetual license. I mean, Reaper doesn't seem to be going anywhere. It's still really cheap and it does pretty much everything you need it to do. Um, but I would just expect that we'll be seeing a lot more of this in the future. So let me know in the comments section below, do you pay uh, the monthly subscription for Pro Tools or do you use a perpetual license? If you use a perpetual license, let me know if, if you will, will be continuing to use Pro Tools um, if they only only allow you to use subscriptions going forward and for more door talk and tutorials and tips just hit that subscribe button and as always thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time